Abigail Scott Dunaway, born in 1834, died in 1915, was a true pioneer or a pathbreaker. She was known for her hard efforts in women's suffrage and women's rights. At the age of 17, Abigail traveled with her family from Illinois to Oregon by ox draw wagon. It was a difficult journey for her group. Many people in her group died from, disease, from diseases and drowning. It has been so long since we left Illinois. I can't believe all the places that we've been through on our journey west. I've been so worried about my family getting sick. Cholera was widespread that year, and before they reached Oregon, both Abigail's mother and youngest brother had died. My heart is broken. It feels terrible leaving my mother and baby brother buried here. But we must journey on to reach the Oregon country before winter sets in. The entire journey was 2,400 miles long. During the journey to Oregon, Abigail was asked to keep a journal by her father. She filled the journal with observations about the magnificent landscapes they traveled, as well as with the sorrow of losing her mother and brother. Dear Diary, today we passed Chimney Rock. It's a long spire reached all the way to the heavens. How I wish my mother and baby brother could have seen it too. After arriving in Oregon, Abigail became school teacher. Soon after becoming a teacher, she married <coughs> Benjamin Dunaway, a farmer from Illinois. Abigail and Benjamin had six children. Every day I am so busy caring for the children and helping Benjamin with the farm. The Dunaways lost their farm because a friend who owned them money could not pay them back. Soon afterward, Benjamin was injured when a team of horses ran away. Abigail, my arm is useless ever since the accident, so you must go find work now. I can no lo longer earn the money we need. Abigail had to support the family because her husband could not work. She found that it was hard to find a good paying job because as a woman, she was payless. I will return to teaching. I can pay, pay my bills that way. She tried teaching again even though she was paid much less than a male teacher was paid. She also opened a clothing shop. I am worried to death how little I am paid. I have heard male teachers are getting paid four times what I am making. Women deserve better. In 1871, Abigail began publishing the New Northwest, a weekly newspaper committed to improving women's lives. At the time the newspaper began, married women did not even have the right to own their own clothes. Abigail also published many works of fiction and poetry throughout her life. Benjamin, I am sick and tired of being paid unfairly. I am starting a newspaper to teach people about the importance of giving women fair wages. It is right that you start the paper. Someday our daughters may be in the same situation. She became lifelong friends with Susan B. Anthony, a leader of women's suffrage movement. Susan B. Anthony helped introduce Abigail to the way laws were made and how politics work. I will teach you all that I have learned, Abigail. You have so much intelligence and potential. I know you will help change women's lives for the better. One of Abigail's goals was to achieve suffrage victories in Oregon, Washington, and Idaho. Suffrage is to right to vote. To make her ideas happen, Abigail traveled around the state and gave speeches. She also wrote many articles for her newspaper and published many books. The young woman of today free to study, to speak, to write, to choose their occupation should remember that every inch of this freedom was bought for them at a great price. 
It is for them to show their gratitude by helping onward the reforms of their own times by spreading the light of freedom of truth still wider. The debt that each generation owes to the past, it must pay to the future. Many, many powerful men, including her brother, Harry's got to try to stop her. A woman's place is in the home. She should obey her husband and not make a fuss. She should serve her family and leave politicking to men. After fighting for 40 years, her hard work had paid off. The Idahoan woman won the vote in 1896, followed by the Washingtonians in 1910. After a number of early near wins, Oregonians finally achieved victory in 1912, eight years before the passage of the United States Amendment giving all women the right to vote. Oswald West, the governor of Oregon, at the time visited Abigail at her home. He had her write out the equal suffrage proclamation in her own hand, then he signed it. We have finally been heard by the people of Oregon. Today is a marvelous day. Now all women have the right to vote. Abigail was the first woman registered to vote in Oregon. Abigail died in Portland, Oregon in October 1915. At the age of 81, she is buried in Riverview Cemetery. Abigail Scott Dunaway will be remembered for her tireless efforts to earn all women the right to vote. When women's true history shall have been written, her part in the upbuilding of this nation will astound the world. <laughs>